Oprah. Come on, Mama, let's Don't go. let him do this, Opal. This way, pal. Opal, we can work things out. Come I'm on, I'm going to work you right out of my system. I never want to lay eyes on you again for as long as I live. Opal! Oh. 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 Father! Oh, no. No, get away. Get away from him. His pills. Have you got your pills? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. Fever, but will you do me, please, one thing? Would you please tell me that you're Tad? My Tad. Would you please tell me that's who you really are? Can you see me? Who am I? She's dead solid certain that guy is Tad Martin. You showed her his ID, right? Yeah, I could have showed her Michael Williams' fingerprints and birth certificate. It wouldn't make any difference. He's Tad. He's so sick. He picked up somebody else's jacket. It's not his wallet, not Come his on, ID. Man, man. Come on, I'd well, swear he was Tad. Yeah, well, so would I. Only he's not. I mean, we know that Tad and Brooke are getting married right now, so the only thing that's going to convince her is if she sees the bridegroom in person or hears the truth from somebody that she trusts, like his parents. I called Joe. He and Ruth are coming. Leave the reception? Are you serious? We can't leave here now. Leave? Nobody's leaving. The party's just started. The only person that's leaving is Palmer, and he's already gone. Why, Mrs. Martin? Why, what's happened? Dad, what is it? Joe! Joe, help! Get in here, fire! You know, I think I must have just asked you the all-time stupidest question. What? my answer the second you opened your eyes. Shh, don't, no, you don't, you don't have to say anything. It's okay. Dr. Santos said that you're supposed to rest, and I'm here to make sure that you do that. Hi. Well, Dr. Santos. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling? He's very weak. I'll bet. Well, the fever's down. How's that headache? How are the tests going? You know, the blood tests? Oh. Swelling's down a little, too. We got the results, and they just don't add up. You still don't know what did this to him? Not yet. We're still treating him symptomatically. We are running more tests, though. Well, how long will that take? That just depends. Um, I'd like to do another examination on him and see if I can dig up any new facts, if that's okay. Okay, good. Um, would you mind waiting outside or in the lounge? No, no, that's fine. Just a second. Baby, I'm gonna be right outside, okay? I'm not gonna go really far. You just hang in there. You're gonna be fine. Dr. Santos is gonna find out what's wrong with you, and you're gonna get well, and then you and me are gonna be together. And we're gonna be very happy. I love you. Take good care of it. Got quite a cheering section. So beautiful. Well, <clears throat> if you could just take a deep breath for me and let it out very slowly. She saved me. 
Look, Edmund, I thought I made this picture pretty clear. I don't need you here. Ruth and Joe Martin are coming. I called them. Well, that's good. They should be here. He's doing a lot better, you know. His fever's gone down. I think he's going to be okay. Thank God. Maybe Joe can figure out what started this and what's wrong with him. <sighs> Dixie, I think you'd better prepare yourself. Edmund, I don't know how to say this to you. I've said it as nicely as I could. Dixie, he's just trying to be a friend. Well, everything is fine. Why don't you go find Brooke and be, be her friend, okay? I'm sure she could use one right now. Nick Palmer! He's a heart! My bag is in the car. I'll get it. It's all my fault. I, I pushed him too far. I'll oh, oh. never forgive Where myself. Where is he? Where is he? He's in there. He didn't even have his pills. Listen, no, no, Joe will get what he needs. Palmer's heart? We don't know yet. Well, he's going to be all right, Opal. It's all my fault. I did this to him. No, 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 Opal. A heart attack is what no one's fault. Is, what if the love of my life... Oh, oh, what if I lose you? Oh, no, 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 no it's not going to happen, Mama. It just won't. Oh, the last thing I said to him was, I never want to lay eyes on you again. As long as I live. <laughs> Mama? Yes. Mama, can you hear me? Will you hold him still, please? <coughs> Mama? Uh, look, just, just step back a little hmm? and give him some air, would you? Speak Thanks very much. Speak to us, lover, please. Oh. Get his pressure. All right, don't leave me, Lumbuck, okay? Don't leave me. I can't take it in the world without you. I need you. I love you, Palmer. I'll forgive you for everything I do. I, we can work it out. Oh. I'm begging you, though, please. Please, honey bunch, please wake up. Palmer. And he's asked Joe. What does it? It's all right, my boy. Don't you worry. Everything's going to be okay, right? Won't it, Joe? Yes. I think so. In my opinion, I'm just going to be fine. Oh, did you hear that, my darling? Everything's going to be fine. How did this chiropractor help? Anyone call 911? An ambulance? We must provide proper transport for our patient to the hospital so we can get extensive tests and observation. Then he'll be all right, won't he? Depends on your definition of all right. I'm going to admit Palmer to the hospital, Opal, for one reason, and one reason only, to preclude any possible malpractice suit. I would really like to check him into psychiatric under observation. Any man who would pull and fake a coronary is capable of anything. Fake? Fake a coronary? His pulse is steady. His blood pressure is 130 over 75. There's no physical evidence whatsoever for cardiac distress. Boy, if you want to live, Buster, your ticker better be in shreds. Joe, Joe, there's no need for an ambulance or for a stay in the hospital. This can't be happening. Joe, I feel just fine, fine. You feel just fine. Did you all hear that? He feels just fine. I take it now that you are refusing all medical assistance of your own free will? It doesn't matter, Joe. I feel fine. I won't it sue you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Did you hear that? You pull a dumb adolescent stunt like this. Come on, Joe, darling. And it doesn't matter. Nothing matters to you, Palmer. Nothing whatsoever. It so happens I was on my way over to the hospital to see about poor Dixie. Dixie? What's wrong with Dixie? I don't know. Gloria said I had to get there right away. Let's go. All right, all right, let's go. Well, I'll tell you now, I have seen everything. Dad? Yeah. Well, Call me. I, I just want to know that she's all right, that's all. Right. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, boy, Palmer. 
court. Oh, but just try to stay calm now. What are you waiting for? Throw his deceitful butt out of here. Now, just, just hold it right there. He isn't going anywhere. Not just yet. Just vamos, would you guys? Please. Now, you and me are going to have ourselves a little private chant. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? I, I have to make an announcement. I'm happy to say that Palmer Cortland is just fine. And he is on his way home. So, uh, be my guest. Have some more champagne and uh, rejoice. Thank you. So, how are we doing? <laughs> Palmer really is fine. He went home. The fit was a fake. Well, how is Opal? Probably hiding her head somewhere in shame. I really don't care. I don't want to talk to either one of them. Right now, I want to dance with my wife. Oh, your wife. Mrs. Thaddeus James Martin. My husband. Mr. Brick English. <laughs> Play something romantic. Hey! Uh, could I have everybody's attention, please? <laughs> Grab your uh, champagne. The best man is about to make a toast. To the triumph of joy over experience, to love and laughter and happily ever after. Oh. Oh. To Brook and Tad. To Brook and Tad. Right here. Right. Right. Better get those glasses tuned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your, your parents are, are gone. <laughs> yeah, the, the hospital beep. Oh, the hospital, right. I never did find out what, what happened. Mr. Gray, um, Miss Cooney is absolutely positive that Mr. Martin has not been out of the country in at least the last six months. Look, Dixie doesn't know anything, except he showed up at the cabin sick as a dog. Now, did he say anything? He, he said that she was beautiful and that she saved his life. There's nothing wrong with his eyes. She left and he fell into a deep sleep so i know that's that's what he needs at this point but what i need right now is a diagnosis and what you're telling me is that there is a possibility that he has been out of the country lately anything's possible okay doc if i were you i would treat this patient as a john doe i don't think anybody around here can tell you where he's been or what he's up to okay so i just showed up at the cabin right and it was raining it was absolutely pouring and I was thinking, I was doing a lot of thinking, I was thinking about me, I was thinking about Tad, when all of a sudden it just hit me how totally stupid I was. I mean, just to let Tad marry Brooke without ever telling him how I was feeling. Dumb. So, I got all my stuff together, I got ready to go to Pine Valley, and I opened the door. And who was there? He found me. Did he say his name was Tad? Well, he didn't have to. I mean, I could see it. What did he say? Well, nothing. Really? I mean, he was very sick. But his eyes... His eyes said everything. Then his, um... His fever got really high and he started to go into seizures. And I didn't know what to do. The storm got really, really bad. I couldn't even get him back here till this morning. But... I think that he's going to be fine. I think whatever Dr. Santos says about it is absolutely wrong. And I think he just has the flu or something, and he's going to be okay. I think he will be. Yeah. He's going to be fine. He's going to get strong. He's going to get well. And I think we're going to be together. And you, my dear, I, you know, I think we're going to get married. I would like you to be the matron of honor. Um, well, well, thank you, Dixie. Uh, but, uh... But what? Look, you... You don't believe Edmund, do you? 
Dixie, that, that, that sick man had a wallet. Oh, come on. So we picked up the wrong coat. Edmund saw him. Well, so did you. That man in there is Tad. You saw it. Anybody could see it. Started, keep your hands off her. Uh, well, the hospital called. There was an emergency. They beeped Dad and Mom decided to leave with it. Without saying goodbye? Well, they wanted me to send their love and tell you that they're sorry that they had to leave, but it was an emergency. Okay. No. They're coming, they're coming. Brooke, Dad. Oh. Everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Come on, they're right. coming. You know, Derek, that was some wild goose chase to the gazebo. What's going on? What's everybody staring at us for? Well, it's time to open the present. There's going to be more, so I want to have heavy things. Forget about it. Hey, check this out. This your idea, Jack? Oh, <laughs> nice double. That's very romantic. It's for you. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, Brooke and I got together. We decided that uh, we already have as many toasters as we need. So we conspired with everybody here, and we decided instead of wedding presents that we would help you replace what you lost in the fire. Are you serious? This stuff is for us. Uh-huh. And Jack is going to handle all your insurance and legal problems gratis. Unless, of course, you want to get a good lawyer. No. <laughs> Anything for my part. And Dad's putting together a construction crew. I'm going to build you a new house. And the shovel is for groundbreaking. Rob Yay! Thank you. I... Thank you, everyone. All right. Yes. Let's break up the party. Move this stuff back. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. All right. Let's go. You okay. Love. Oh, me first. I'll get that shovel before somebody gets killed. Thanks, Trevor. Oh, no, I gotta have everyone. This was Tad's idea. So, Tad, I, uh, I just don't know what to say. Well, you could say that, um, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. How's that? Oh, definitely. All right. I'm lucky. You're the dream that I thought would never come true. The guy looks just like Tad. Look, don't listen to him. He's a dead ringer. He is not. He is Tad. End of discussion. Now, the antibiotics or whatever Dr. Santos is giving him seem to be working very well. They've brought his fever down, and I think he's going to be fine. Now, I, I was just telling Gloria he showed up at the cabin at the same time that I was going to leave and go back to Pine Valley to see him, but he was sick. I mean, he was very, very sick. Yeah, his temperature got so high last night he had a seizure. But he's going to be fine. Dr. Santos is taking very good care of him. And you've taken good care of him, too. Yes, I have. I stayed with him all night, and uh, these two very kind gentlemen, Russ and Roy, brought us down here in their van, and I held on to him. Dix, the man you held was not Tad. Joe, how can you say that? Because, honey, it's true. No. Look, th that's not true. Edmund is, is wrong. Joe and I just left Tad at his house. But he's here, in the hospital. He is. Dixie. Tad married Brooke this afternoon. He's at his wedding reception. How can you say that? How can you, how can you hurt me like that? Honey, nobody's trying to hurt you. Whoever it was who showed up at Phoebe's cabin was not our son. His ID said his name was Michael Williams. Look, I, I'm not, I, I'm not listening to any of this. All right, you guys, just, just, just leave me alone. It's not Tad. I think men and women should share household chores, don't you? I cook, and my husband. Yes. Hey, Dix. You all right? Say something. Hmm? Joe. Darling, 
I, I'm, I'm really so terribly, terribly sorry. I don't know exactly what happened at the cabin or or at the hospital, but I couldn't let you go on thinking. Look, Ruth, I, I don't know what happened either. But I can promise you one thing. I'm not making it up. I'm not crazy. We know you're not. He, he said something to me. He called me Dixie. When he looked in my eyes, I could tell that he knew who I was. And I knew that he loved me. Dixie, the guy was sick. He was totally out of it. Now, you bring him in, you save his life. What does that make you in his eyes? An angel. It's okay. Dad married Brooke? Yes, honey. That wasn't Tad in the cabin. It was someone else. He didn't find me. He married Brooke. And I thought everything was fine. I thought everything was going to be okay. Dixie, I'm so sorry that this had to happen to you. I was on my way, Ruth. I mean, I did it. I finally listened to what everybody and Edmund and, and and Phoebe and you were telling me that I should not let him marry Brooke without telling him how I felt. I was on my way. You got blindsided. I, I thought I told him. I thought that I said when I said that I love you to that man in there, whoever he was, I thought... I thought it was everything. But it was nothing. Dixie, honey, please. please. Dixie, it, it wasn't nothing. You were right the first time. It meant everything. If you were on your way to tell Tad that you loved him, and you thought you had, then you need to make sure that Tad knows that. <laughs> Attention all wedding guests! The bride and groom are now ready for departure. Oh, Honeymoon no, destination no. unknown. Uh, it's bouquet throwing time. Uh, right. So, all single ladies, oh, all single ladies, Me front too. and center, oh, yeah. maestro, can we have a little bouquet yeah. tossing music? Come on, Haley, right. Celine, Laurel, oh, no, no, uh, excuse me, Myrtle. You gotta come back here. Where are you going? Uh, come on, girlfriend. Everybody. Darling, I wish you great joy. And of course I do, too. Oh, thank you. All right, you sure you don't want me to go over Jamie's schedule one more no, time? I'm, I'm fine. No. So, how's Palmer? Oh, he's fine. Everything's fine. Love you. I love you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful wedding trip. I will. Charlie, get over here. You did good, great one. She's a fabulous one. I know. Thanks for not losing the ring. Ah! <laughs> Anytime. Just don't do it again. Too soon. Okay. Yeah. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. What? I want you to call the hospital. I want you to make sure Dixie's all right. Yeah. You got it. Okay. okay. Troops assembled and ready for action. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Come on. All right. This is it. Are we ready? Or never. If it's one thing I've learned, it's that it's never too late. Love can work miracles. It is too late. Tad and Book are married. But Tad didn't know you still love him. And he never will. Because I don't have any right to lay that burden on Ted, and because I don't want to, and you have to promise me that. Everybody in this room has to just promise me that they're not going to say a single thing about what I said about loving Ted or planning to marry him. But it's not fair he doesn't know. I don't care. That's my decision, all right? And all I ask is that you respect it. Dixie, honey. What? Look, he married Brooke, okay? I don't have any right to interfere in that. Maybe he doesn't love Brooke. Maybe he loves you. He married the mother of his child, all right? They are together, and they're trying to work things out. This, this new woman and his son are going to make a family without me. He's obviously trying to get on with his life. And if he heard about this, 
It would be ridiculous. I mean, he would think somebody was playing some cruel, practical joke on his life. And that's exactly what happened to you, isn't it, Dixie? Look, let's just let Tad be happy, okay? Just let him be happy. Then let me take you home. No, it's all right. You're working. No, why don't I do it? No, it's okay. I think I'm going to stick around until I know whoever that is in there is okay. Hi. Um, go ahead. You won't believe it. I'm going to go and see if I can get some more test results, and he's in room 402. Yeah. thoughts no <laughs> just wondering where we're going life's greatest adventure and the destination paradise i swear we will never ever regret this day <laughs> <laughs> 